thousands of jobs at risk. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your coffee, let's look at this article from news.com.au, written by Frank Chung. Thousands of jobs on the line as Australian billionaire Lex Greensill's empire titters on the brink of collapse. A watermeloner a watermelon farmer turned billionaire is staring down the collapse of his financial empire and thousands of Aussie jobs hang in the balance. A Bundaberg farmer turned globe-trotting billionaire is this week staring down the collapse of his financial empire and thousands of Australian jobs could hang in the balance. Lex, who famously grew up on Australia's largest sweet potato farm before embarking on a high-flying career in finance, is racing to save his troubled lender Green Sill Capital after investment bank Credit Suisse on Monday froze billions of dollars of funding, kicking off an explosive chain of events that has rocketed the financial industry. Green Sill Capital is now preparing to file for insolvency, according to the Financial Times and Bloomberg News, and is scrambling to sell off large parts of his business to US private equity firm Apollo Group Management. The deal is reportedly worth $128 million. That fire sale would all but wipe out Green Seal's shareholders, including Japanese giant SoftBank, SoftBank are caught up in this, which poured US $1.5 billion into the company in 2019. The UK-based firm, which was founded in 2011 and last year was valued at $6 billion, is also in the crosshairs of Germany's financial watchdog which on Wednesday froze the operations of its um, Bremen-based subsidiary Greensill Bank, citing an imminent risk of over-indebtedness. The Financial Times further reported on Wednesday that Barfin, the German regulator, had filed a criminal complaint against Greensill's bank's management for alleged balance sheet manipulation, a crime punishable with up to three years in jail. In its statement announcing it was freezing operations at Greensill Bank, Barfin expressed concern about alleged accounting irregularities, including in deals with the GFG Alliance Group, headed by Indian-British billionaire Sanjeev Gapta. During a special forensic audit, Barfin found the Greensill Bank AG was unable to provide evidence of the existence of receivables in its balance sheet that it had purchased from GFG Alliance Group, Barfin said. So what is G Green Skills Capital? Green Skills Capital, as its bread and butter, is a supply chain finance company. Its clients until recently included large corporations like T uh, Tesla, Vodafone in the UK, Australian con construction giant uh, CMIC, and the UK's National Health Service. Supply chain finance is a way for large businesses to effectively offer an alternative payment option for their suppliers. A large company such as Telstra will offer a supplier the option, in this case via Greensill, to receive payment earlier at the cost of a slight discount on the face value of the invoice. It's up to the supplier to decide whether it's more valuable to them to get paid in, say, one week, or rather wait, in some cases, up to 90 days to receive full value of the invoice. Well, <laughs> we've all been there in the construction company. As any small business owner knows, payment deadlines are a major issue. Waiting up to three months to get paid after supplying goods or services can put a major strain on cash flow. Rather than, than having to borrow money on their credit cards to keep the business ticking over, the supplier may decide they're better off paying a small fee to get paid immediately. My parents couldn't afford to send me to university because we had to wait a long time for big retailers to pay us. The 44-year-old told the UK Sunday Times, in a 2018 interview that caused me earlier what that caused me early on to have to focus on how that could be fixed mate you grew up in australia you could have gotten hex here what, what the hell are you talking about come on seriously you're in bundy you could have gotten a part-time job in queentown I, I think that's a i think that's a bit of crap story maybe seriously <laughs> come on. he's not that much older than me he's 44 come on I mean, that's the sob story. You, you've got to have it. I mean, he's right. Getting paid late is a pain, a, a real pain. And I'm sure anyone in the construction game is familiar with, the, with this feeling. You know. 
As a middleman, Greenskill purchases the invoice from the supplier and in turn receives the full invoice amount from, in this example, Telstra at an agreed point in the future. Greenskill purchased $140 billion worth of invoices last year. Or to put it another way, the company lent that money to its clients, the large corporations. The benefit for a company like Telstra is that typically the supply chain finance company will agree to extend the payment term from, say, 30 days to 60 days, giving it more flexibility over its balance sheet. But rather than simply taking its cut from the margin, Greensill then took those repayment agreements and securitized the debt, turning it into bonds, which it then sold as financial products. I mean, okay, okay, there you go. That's where Greensill's major source, that, uh, sorry, this was Greensill's major source of funding. Why, you might ask, would anyone buy them? Because in theory, they're considered a, a safe short-term investment since the company's on the hook to cough up the money are generally big, credit-worthy players. So what went wrong? Things came unstuck this week when Credit Suisse, which had been hoovering up Greensill's debt packages to the tune of $10 billion and selling them to pensions, uh, to pensions, rich clients, and others, froze its supply chain finance funds, citing considerable uncertainties with respect to their accurate valuation. Swiss asset manager GAM Holding, Greensill's other major source of funding, also pulled the plug this week. Credit Suisse's decision on Monday came the same day as Greensill's credit insurance providers allowed policies covering more than $4 billion in assets to lap, lapse, the Wall Street Journal reported. Greenskill had obtained credit insurance to ensure investors holding its debt packages would be paid out in the event, even uh, in the event one of the underlying customers defaulted on a payment. But as early as July last year, Greensill's insurances insurers had informed the company they had no intention of extending coverage past March one this year. What is that telling you about their confidence in the market? Incredibly, the company only sought legal advice about its position last week. Greensill went to the New South Wales Supreme Court asking for an emergency injunction that would have extended its insurance coverage. Barrister Ruth Higgins SC told the court Greensill faces faced catastrophic consequences if the policy were not re renewed. Greensill Bank will be unable to provide further funding for working capital to of Greensill's clients, she said in an affidavit. In the absence of that funding, some of Greensill's clients are likely to become insolvent defaulting on their existing facilities. That in turn may trigger further adverse consequences on third parties, including the employees of Greensill's clients. Greensill estimates that over 50,000 jobs, including 70,000 in Australia, may be at risk. It was not immediately clear which Australian companies were at risk of insolvency. What this is showing is how one thing can just snowball and ripple through the financial sector and affect real people and it can happen quick real quick the court rejected the application chiding Greensill for waiting to seek relief within hours of covery expiry despite the fact that the underwriter's position was made clear eight months ago oh boy while the request for an emergency injunction was denied Greensill will return to court to argue the matter on Friday and Greensill's responses. In a statement regarding allegations of criminality at Greensill Bank, a spokesman said, as a matter of practice, Greensill Bank seeks external legal and audit advice before booking any new assets. Greensill Bank began booking future receivable assets in June 2019, he said. The bank's management and risk committee received extensive advice from leading German and UK law firms, which involved the way in which the assets were classified. Our auditors reviewed and approved the classification at the time and in their subsequent audits. In late 2019 and early 2020, the German Deposit Protection Scheme, um, Profundverbund Deutsche Banken, oh my, <laughs> my German is terrible considering it's my mother language, further reviewed all the bank's assets and raised no obligation, objections. In late 2020 and early 2021, the BaFin advised that they did not agree with the way the assets were classified by Greensill Bank and directed that they be changed. 
In accordance with Barfin's request, Greensill Bank immediately complied and changed the way the assets were classified. For the avoidance of doubt, Greensill Bank has at all times been transparent with its regulators and auditors about its approach to classifying assets and the methodologies for determining such classification. This afternoon, Barfin issued a six-week moratorium on Greensill Bank. On the reported sale to Apollo Group Management, the spokesman confirmed a deal was in the works but did not name the company. Greenskill confirms that it has entered a period of exclusivity with a leading global financial institution with a view to concluding a transaction with them in weeks. This transaction is expected to include large parts of Greensill's business and its assets under management. The structure of the new business is still being determined and as soon as we have clarity on this, we'll be able to communicate the impact of these changes on roles. We expect the transaction to ensure the majority of our clients will continue to be funded in the same way as they currently are. And this is written by Frank Chung from news.com.au. So the most interesting thing from this is how, you know, the collapse of this or the issues with just some accounting with this can ripple through and cost jobs all over the world. What do you reckon? As always, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links from Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. You can buy merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.